Hey, what is up chat? Welcome to the very first stream I'm doing. Still have to find my way a little bit around everything that's going on. Still need to find that optimal camera check. Which apparently is still with a rectangle. Damn it, Cam. Stop putting the rectangle on my face. Anyway, almost weekend. Hope you all have a good uh, Friday afternoon for those of you in Europe. And uh, I'm just gonna quickly check what I was planning today. All right, so I have some stuff to set up. So I'm just gonna prep that one and then we can get the show started. Everything is visible. I'm not 100% sure. I'm just going to quickly check. Is that visible? That's somewhat visible now. I have this thing in my face, I'm not sure what it is. It's driving me nuts. Let me see if I can up. There. Small delay, so I need to wait until I'm actually doing it on the street. a bit better doesn't it? I think this is an idea. I think this is gonna be it. If for some reason you cannot read it, let me know. I'll up it. Also very curious to see how the sound is. Setting everything up takes a while. So let me just quickly check that. Which means I have to... Do some stuff on my own. There we go. All right, my voice was apparently very low. I hope this is better. Maybe that was a bit too much. <laughs> Still fine tuning, man. Still fine tuning. All right, I think that's good. Setup is done. Gonna put the music on my level as well. All right, so we started this stream, or at least I started this stream, so I could share my development flow, my development process, and my learnings with all of you. And it's a good way for me to stimulate to work on open source software and to learn new stuff that I don't have the time to when I do my client work. And so, but first we have to set everything up. I already did the scenes like you could see. Hopefully you enjoy them. Hopefully they're good. Hopefully you like them. And uh, I'm going to check out now what the bot can do. I've not checked it out yet. I'm using 
uh, Streamlabs, as you can see on the screen, uh, Streamlabs OBS to stream on the Mac. Uh, might fall away, it's still in beta, so if I suddenly crash, blame it on the Streamlabs. But so far, so good, and I hope they're keeping up. So what can we do with this cloud bot? So I already uh, enabled the cloud bot, that's fine. And I'm not so much interested in all of this because well, so far I don't have any issues with this. So it tells you the chat alerts, that's fine. Makes it easy for me to follow along as well. Media chair, allow your viewers to interact with your media share widget. I don't even think I have that widget, right? I have it set up. Do you, I don't want none of the, the weird stuff just yet. Let's see what custom commands we have. Follow H. So it has been following the channel for, and then the follow H, that's fine. What's this GCD cooldown? Okay. And what's the UCD? User cooldown. Global cooldown. Okay, so it needs to be 10 seconds between each person. Uptime, the stream, gamer tags. Oh, right. No, I'm not doing that anymore. Support me, do so the donate link. Would be nice. Everything goes back to, into the stream. So that's good. Schedule, but I don't have it yet. Technically, that's not 100% through. So let's quickly change that. You can catch me on stream. Every Friday from 13 to 16 p.m. My mic is in the way. I I'm not used to typing it like this way. But, uh, um, Casually go live during other days. Hit the follow button to be notified. All right, everyone can see that. That's fine. So that means if I do schedule. Jesus, my typing is off. All right, that's nice. There's rules, no backseat gaming, but I'm not doing any gaming. So that's fine. Join me. What did I set up? This has been ages ago. Yeah, we're not doing that as well. Not for now. Maybe in the future, I'll see. The thing is I want to keep my gaming like, I game in a weird way, very chill, very relaxed. I don't want people to, I want to be focused on also reading all of the text for everyone in those cases. Um, these are all regular stuff. I don't know what all this heist stuff is, miscellaneous. I don't even have a merch store. Well, merch. These are all on. Set game. Changes the stream game. Try to. Uh, only moderators. Okay. It's fine. That's fine. But I thought the modules were not set up, right? No. So technically, they wouldn't be even in the stream if you could want to use them. Variables, betting, command, custom. Interesting. Face mask. It's a weird thing. Anyway, I know one more that I want to add. Let's see here, custom. I'm going to add a clerk something I've been doing a lot 
Oh, there is a lurk. No, it's not the same. It's not what I want. It's the advanced uh, the cooldowns. You can cost, cost, base cost, loyalty cost. Not doing that. I want to do that. Chat shouldn't pay for that. So you can do slash me is lurking. What is a good lurk stuff? I usually lurk when I watch other streams and so me, so blah blah is lurking, username is lurking. Just want to let you know. <laughs> it's weird. Um, but what would I type? Hey, I'm lurking. Have fun in the chat. So now we have a lurk. Cool, cool. It's funny how it says Streamlabs is lurking instead of me. Uh, so, variable names is probably username. Let's change that. It's not the bot that is lurking. All right, pull down. What did I put down? 60. It's a full minute. Just to get it going, chat. Seriously? There it is. Actually, if it's Streamlabs that's saying it, I could as well change it. Why is the freaking rectangle on my face? Camera. Why is there a rectangle on my face? Can I make it disappear? It's not disappearing. Give me a second, chat. It's not disappearing. I don't know how to do that. I have to figure that one out. Got to figure out how to remove the rectangle. Chat if you know, feel free to let me know. Anyway, so if it's actually stream bot, we might as well change it because it's Streamlabs saying that, hey, you're, you're lurking, so. Uh, And I can definitely see in the chat that the user dot name is highlighted. So I'm thinking that if everyone does it, you're always highlighted. So I'm not sure. Let's do welcome username. And then normally I would know that someone is lurking, so I can easily say, hey, welcome. Have fun lurking. Stuff like that. All right. Command is updated. I think a full minute has passed, so let's try it again. Lurk. Doom. That's what we want. That's good. That's good. 
Now I'm wondering if there's anything else that we can use. But at this point, I don't think there really is, right? Stuff like what are we working on and everything, it's not useful yet. I think I can always add that later. So that is pretty fine. Give me one second chat. Just checking something else as well. All right. So we've got some basic stuff set up. That's nice. There are some defaults as well. We saw that. Permission to link, but I'm not, I'm not taking out the link, so that's fine. Raffles. I don't think I have. Is, is Raffles set on? Is it by default on? I think it is. Timers. Nope. Come on. S default. Couldn't find my way. Quotes. Do we really need quotes? And only moderators can add quotes, so just me. Cues. Add a video to the queue. Ah, media share. Okay. I'll leave it on. I'm, I'm probably not gonna use it, but loyalty. Why not be able to give uh, stuff to anyone else, right? Manage to your vote, bet, it's all balls, miscellaneous, eight balls, all that stuff. Fine. Timers, you don't have any timers. Well, I could add a timer to remind you all to follow me if you like it, but I think that speaks for it. I don't know what the hell I did here. Quotes. Cues. No cues. Loyalties. Oh! Okay. That's cool. Yeah, I'm first. That makes sense. Store. There's no loyalty store yet. You can create items. So what does this do? Stream perk. Sound effect. Access code. I don't know. Pause. Betting. Giveaways. I wish I could, but... User management and importer. I think that somewhat sums it up for our bot at this point. So I'm gonna leave it like that. All right, chat. There's still some stuff I want to do on the stream as well, but uh, it's gonna be more difficult to do during the stream. double the sound and everything all right so I gathered some links during the week and I think I'm gonna do this like every every week so this uh, so I got this like I follow a lot of newsletters coding style and everything uh, development stuff web development so I'm just gonna set up real quickly all of the links. You can have a look at what they are. So 
hang on tight. Just some interesting stuff I saw during the week. That I want to get into. We could go into. More like that. So let's start with Elsa and let's see what it is. So Elsa is a minimal, fast, secure runtime for JavaScript and TypeScript written in Go. I'm not sure it's readable again. Make it a big bit bigger. Let me know in the chat if you can read it or not. If not, I'll, I'll make it bigger. There we go. Wait, am I not logged in here? I am. I do get the cookie stuff. Anyway. They even have a little Discord tag. That's cool. I didn't know you could do that. That's new. So, you can do URL-based imports. Yes, net access, complying to web standards, support TypeScript, module catching. So I want to add an HTTP server and some installation scripts. And you need to build from source with Go. So you can import hello from their site to hello Elsa. Run it, it will add the hello Elsa. That's pretty cool. Alright, not so much my thing, but. Then we have Wireflow, which sounded very interesting. I'm gonna get this on everything, right? Until I refresh. So, Wireflow is a flowchart collaboration app. On Netlify, so that's cool. Dependencies are up to date. Def dependencies are up to date. One backer, one sponsor. That's cool that you can add all of this stuff. So they have an official website. That already looks cool, but I'm wondering how far, how much of this is, is from them and how much is like literally in the app and how much is actually built from outside the app imported. So have YouTube video, posts, local development, and some credits. And a sponsor. Proxy crawl. Let's see what their site says. Free wire, user flow tool online open source tool for creating beautiful user flow prototypes no Photoshop skills required so it seems like they actually have all of the graphics that you see in here in their own system simplify the process in the early stage of project planning some planning with double N and brainstorming I think these guys could use some uh, contributions our mission is to remove needs for complex software softwares software isn't software already like um, how do you say it in English the, the, the multi thing that's a bit weird but okay so you don't need to buy anything actually I already have sketch but this sounds pretty interesting what they can do And it's open source, which is nice. And you have 113 flows. Not sure what they use as a flow. This is one flow. I'm 
Okay. The founder made six commits. So it's everyone. So the team and uh, the collaborators. Actually, you know what? I actually like this this stuff. If this works really nicely. So it's a meteor react node. That's interesting. Gotta say, chat, I can do JavaScript, but I'm not super, super, super in it. So, how can I keep track that I want to do some stuff in this? Actually, is there actual site also open source? Because they get some typos in there. That's probably not. Let's see what's in the index. Okay. Source. Images. The components. So did it there less stuff 10 days ago? Is that possible? What kind of issues do they have? Custom style of group. VS Code extension. Addressing the recent exposure. So they know about the typing mistakes. And then they actually, <laughs> they, they're making a, a commercial for a different app that they're building. But they want to... Do stuff with it. Going to move away from the Meteor version. And we'll create another version with Vanilla.js. Vanilla.js. And Prisma Azura as database entry. I have to say, I've never heard about these two. Oh, the typo. So modern database access for TypeScript and Node.js. I want to, I want to have a look at this. So I'm just gonna add it to my things. Prisma. Hmm. Modern database access. TypeScript. Oh. I don't know why, but it feels so different typing it like this with the um, with the mic in front of me. So I have to get used to that. Excuse me for that. But this actually looks pretty interesting. So you know about the users, you create, you add some data. That's cool. They have nice setup stuff, more productive. Okay, saved. Let's see what this app actually does. If I can do it for free. 
That's actually pretty cool. There is no search. So it's a bit weird. Nothing has a name. Nothing has like you don't know what you're you're using. So if I want something that looks like a home page. Sure I can take something, but oh. I thought I was scaling it, but apparently I'm just pulling stuff out. I cannot make this bigger. So it stays this, uh, what's this header thing? Ah, it's a little gray header bar. I see. If the sound is too high, guys, please let me know. Because I see it goes into the red. And I'm not used to doing all of this. So for example, you have your home page. And you could go to a 404. <laughs> which then would go back to your home page. This. It's a bit weird because you can make different flows, right? Interesting, but a bit weird. And then technically you could go to, and I saw it somewhere, a pricing page. Not sure if you have anything like a confirmation or something. That you're actually buying something. Tool's not bad. It's pretty fun to use and it's super simple, right? So what options do we have? Copy, paste, delete. You can zoom, you can fit the map. Okay actual size put stuff back in front multi-select groups and groups what if you add a label let's see so pricing oh it has it in the top yeah so you could potentially say like this is my home the four, four technically it doesn't need a label because you can see it and you go to product you go to the product pricing and then uh, uh, the my details or something it's actually pretty interesting I actually kind of like this tool Yeah, pretty cool. And I'm actually gonna I'm not save this, but um, it's more for my UX. Cool. That's pretty cool tool. That's pretty nice to watch. To uh, to use, I'm just gonna copy and paste it in chat so everyone can have a look. There we go. So 100 plus graphics, real time collaboration, project permissions, live chat. I don't think they built everything yet. I don't see like chat and whatever. Unless this is like, what is this? This feels like a download button, but it's not downloading anything. 
So that that's an issue. You cannot download anything. Just have like a key. No. So in the end, everything you do gets lost. I also don't think this is a hundred plus images, but still, still a pretty good old tool, pretty cool tool. All right, next up, Ali. It's a load testing tool aimed to perform real-time analysis. Inspired by Vegeta and Jplot. This is an X for build is failing, but it's right in the terminal. And that's pretty cool. You can install it even through Homebrew. Only works with item too. Given the following JSON output, you can grab the number of thread over time. Okay, right, cool. And so what does Vegeta do? Vegeta is the <laughs> versatile HTTP load testing tool built out of a need to drill HTTP service with a constant request rate. It can be used both as command line utility and the library. That's interesting. Also install with brew. And you need go for the source. Makes sense. Then you can use Vegeta. Not really something I would use, but still interesting tool. Interesting. So Ali comes with an embedded terminal-based UI where you can plot the matrix in real time. So let's perform real-time analysis on the terminal. You can also install it with Brew and Docker, and then you just do Ali. And then the attack will be launched with default options. So, load testing tool, right? So it's not something you want to do on a production-based site. I guess. Do you, do you do this on like a production thing? I'm not an ops guy, I have no idea. Looks cool. Next, Derek. Reduces fatigue for maintainers by automating governance and delegating permissions to your team and community. You even have a Twitter app. Hi, right. Twitter account. It's not that. to support Matthias. <laughs> they actually used it to circumvent uh, October stuff. That's pretty cool. I hope my, my stuff is actually readable because I don't have a good view of it from the dashboard stuff. I hope it's fine. If not, let me know chat. I can always make it different. Actually, you know what I'm gonna do? Just just give me like a 
few minutes. I'm gonna send some some requests out. See if someone can join too. At least someone who lets me know that it's okay or not. I'll be right back. All right. Send some messages out. See if everything is okay. I'll see if someone responds. Let's continue. I was super low key, by the way. Everything about the stream is low key. It's the first stream I'm doing. I've not sent out anything on Twitter, on Facebook, messaging, nothing. I want to keep it low key for the first time and keep track of what I need to do, which actually, give me a second there. Just gonna enter some personal stuff that I need to do because for some reason I need to see how I can remove the damn uh, autofocus thing autofocus rank that go because it is annoying me It is really annoying. Okay. We're back. So we're still on Derek. So you can generate change logs. You can let designated non-admin users manage issues and PRs by commenting Derek. You can enforce a DCO, label and flag PRs, label PRs, detect spam from Oktoberfest. So sad actually. So you can use the manage service or self-host your bot. Yes, I said bot, not bot. So you send more pokes. So you need to set up the. Um, you need to uh, add stuff there. Dot yaml file. And so if you want the sus. Need to install the GitHub app on the individual repos. So you can do it repo based. That's good. Then they have like a template. Let's have a look what it looks like. And you need to raise a PR to the customer's file. And then you need to test if it works. Raise a new issue and type in Derek closed and edit your Derek to add your team and community maintainers and contributors. So what does a Derek YAML file look like? So you have the curators, the features. These are welcome, however, there's some automation that will affect you during October. Okay. Contribution URL. Know? And then you have custom messages like Slack, template, propose, test. Interesting. And what's the customers? I have no idea what this is. But if you are a um, open source maintainer. I think this one is really nice to use. Pretty cool. Uh, 
And then the next one was a YouTube downloader. That was funny to see. Last commit is from July. It's almost three months ago. this pretty bit curl may not work all the time because it goes a short time on the server I see and you can deploy your own stuff keep forgetting me to enlarge the screen for you guys I really hope it's readable. That's the one thing I'm wondering during this first stream. And apparently my cam has disappeared as well. I'm not sure why. So you can use YouTube, YouTube downloader, have a new YouTube downloader, get the links, and then Vardom the links to get the download links. And get like URL, get some format-ish stuff. We're looking for links to include both video and audio in a single file. To look for links that contain both video and audio inside the format property like this one this first one has video audio let me see how they do this very interested in uh, in how they do this stuff mm, on the base I don't really feel like that I like to do so. Start a YouTube video. Search for the string JSON then player. Download or view a buff on player review. Begin at last. YouTube changes position. the very last one I wanted to look at. I also have a different URL site on block videos. Super safe eh, to just click everything. Such as proxy. Alright. So we've been live for an hour now. I'm going to take a really quick break and I'll be right back. Alright, I'm back. Just give me a few. So one of the things I actually need if I want to do some development on this uh, stream is to have something that I can work in. The thing is Streamlabs already takes up like a lot of stuff, right? It already takes up a lot of CPU. There is Wavelink uh, for my mic that is taking a lot of CPU, uh, a lot of memory actually, pretty strange. 
and so I need something that is lightweight to develop on. Now I can go with Sublime, I'm not really a Sublime fan, and I can also go with VS Code, which a lot of people choose, which I can totally understand. I'm just not that big of a fan of it. I'm so used to working with PHP Storm that it's it's crazy and uh, changing that is going to be a bit of a hustle, hassle, hustle. And so a while ago they released Nova, which is a native Mac code editor. And I think you can use it for free for a few days. But let's have a look at what, what Nova, what it really is. I'm gonna share my share the link. Whoa, that's not, it copy pasted the same thing. Here we go, so that's Nova. So it's a native Mac code editor. That's pretty fun. Um, it's a lost art. Cross platforms. Who they are? They created Coda. Never used Coda either. So I have no idea how well that is. So what is it? It's a powerful editor, teamable interface, flexible workflows, useful tools, robust extensions, and a lot of settings. Each of these are clickable, but let's... Uh, they don't even do it correctly. You click editor and you miss like the editor. Anyway. So it starts with a first class text editor. New, hyper fast and flexible. Smart autocomplete, multiple cursors, minimap. Editor over scroll, tag pairs and brackets. And way, way more. Basic stuff, right? Nova has built in support for CoffeeScript, CSS, Diff, Herb, Hamel. HTML, ini, JavaScript, JSON, JSX, Less, Lua, Markdown, Pearl, PHP, very important for me, Python, Ruby, SAS, SCSS, Smarty, SQL, TSX, TypeScript, XML, and YAML. So actually out of the box it supports a lot of stuff, right? It's good. Very expandable with a robust API and a built-in extension browser. So they found some bugs in the Apple text layout engine that they just not, could not fix. So they wrote their own text layout manager from scratch. And it boosted the performance. So how does it look? The interface. Beautiful, clean and fun. Actually, the purple one is really, really, really funny. Kind of gives that, um, that, um, what's it called? Not retro, but, uh, you know, that special vibe. So you can make it look the way you want while still feeling Mac like bright, dark, cyberpunk, it's all you. Teams are CSS-like and easy to write. Nova can even automatically change your team when your Mac switches from light to dark mode. So that means in my case, it should be automatically dark. Workflows. No idea what these are. It doesn't just help you code, it helps your code run. You can easily create built and run tasks for your product projects. We didn't have them in Coda, but boy, do we have them now. So you can add custom scripts, triggering anytime from the toolbar buttons or keyboard shortcuts.
Huh. So they add a task, right? And then they run it. So it runs serve. But how do you know what it runs? What if you have multiple tasks? Tools. Now this is important. Editing text is just part of it. New tab does not just open a fresh document. You can also use it to transmit file browser. Prompt terminal. All of that inside Nova. Meanwhile, Nova sidebar is packed with power. I've got the power! Local file browser, remote file browser, find symbol navigator, text clips, git, task reports, issues, and file tracking and publishing. So far it's cool, but it's nothing that I wouldn't expect actually. <clears throat> Sidebar can also be split to show multiple tools at once on the left and or right side of your editor. Actually, that, that little focus rectangle is driving me crazy. I can see it like on the side. I really have to fix that for the next stream, which will be next Friday. And uh, by then I'll probably do some more uh, marketing for sidebar can also be split show multiple tools at once left and right side of your editor and you can direct your favorite tools in the sidebar dock at the top for one click access also has git source control with clone click to clone repo initialization fetch pull stage on stage commit push you know the drill no built-in diff. I actually don't use diff that much. Git status is available both in the editor and the sidebar. And the useful show last change for line pop-up explains commits. Then it also has a lot of extensions apparently. Gonna open that in a different uh, We can have a look at the extensions afterwards. It can add support for new languages, extend the sidebar, draw new themes, syntax colors, validate code. And they're written in JavaScript so anyone can write them. That sounds like an interesting project to do if we find something useful to write. So this week they have like Emmet, Prettier, TypeScript, ESLint, OneDark, Handcrafted. And then the settings. Everyone has strong editor opinions and we're here to help. Nova has a whole host of settings, easily customizable key bindings, custom quickly switchable workspace layouts. That's interesting because I, I do guess that my workspace would be different if I work on stream versus when I work off stream. Then again, I'm not sure how much I would work on it off stream since I mostly use PHP Storm for that. It's actually funny but it's using significant power this page. And if there's anything you need to work to Nova doesn't have just let us know we're always changing always growing. But then technically you could also write an extension for it I guess. If you really want to do it yourself. And then they have so much more. So much more. What's interesting in this one? Command palette, of course. Makes sense. Auto complete. But quickly, preview tabs. Static web server built in. 
local and remote terminals, markdown preview, and app key bindings. Panixing for servers and keys. Is that like giving them your data? Like, hey, here are my servers and the keys to it. Hold on tight. I'm not sure I would do that, but. Extension API in app extension library. So there's a command palette and there's a Nova command line tool. Doc sizes, quick tap overview. That looks interesting. So what's with the extensions? Most popular, the env, syntax highlight completion for env files, json linting, hp linting, view, html, eslint, css, eslint, twice, to different people. You see, that's the thing. I'm wondering if you add your own extension, do they like validate it? And like in this case, you have two ESLINs ones. So what does it, what does it make a difference to which one you want to use? Like what's the difference between this one and this one? Because they both use ESLint. Docker files, which is on my list to learn which I'll probably do on stream as well. Material team, perfect dark, task finder, nebula, white space, handcrafted, chase format, go. And these are like new ones. WordPress functions. Also on my list to finally really dive into WordPress. And you have to sign in to publish. There was something else as well. There was also API. Whoa, this site really is intensive. Extension library. Yeah. yeah, I'm not going into that one now. So let's, let's download it. Yeah, that's pretty fun. Jesus, does this thing suck battery or what? Let's download it. Oh, it's driving me crazy. Welcome to Nova. Yes, yes. To get you started, we'd like to walk you through a few quick steps. Get started. I want to make sure Nova works for you and I think you'll never go back. We'll stop working, but you'll be able to export your data. When you buy Nova, you keep it forever and get one free year of updates. Actually, that's an interesting um, business model because Sketch, so Sketch uses the same thing, right? So you buy a license, you get Sketch forever, but it stops at a certain update point. In this case, it does the same thing. And it, it's actually a pretty cool business case because if the baseline works for you and there's nothing afterwards that interests you, you can just stop paying. And still use it. Of course, the only thing here is that Nova is, you need to pay for Nova. I actually didn't check how much it costs. How much does Nova cost? $99. And you can upgrade from Coda and you get like $20 off. And then actually, if you keep on updating, it only costs like 49 instead of 99. I get it, right? You... It's 
it's also a bit of supporting developers like in everything like with everything that they do with the developer it just costs time and time is money and it's a bit of a support showing them that you love their app i haven't seen the about yet let's kind of hit them behind the uh Oh, it's just the home page. Thank you. I'm not sure. 99 isn't that much, but VS Code is free. And I think PHP Storm. PHP Storm is a bit more expensive. But, you know, PHP Storm is really good. So it's 199 euros. So it's double. But then, you know, the price lowers. I think I'm now in my third year, so I only pay like 120. And then again, you know, if you're freelancer and you're doing pretty well I mean 99 isn't that much if Nova is pretty good so let's check it out yeah I'm in dark the neon looks interesting but I think I'm just gonna go crazy in it send crash reports to panic sure usage data not a fan. Do not want to go for any news. All right. It asks me if I want to include alerts. So actually, this is the. Uh, the icon this is the icon not a huge fan of the icon to be honest if you look at everything else it's it's just not feels different but you know just an icon don't know what this is search projects all products, local, remote. So how do I Let's see projects? Let's use my personal website. Which is a Hugo website. off the bat this is very small so I think you guys are not going to be able to really see what is going on here so let's check the preferences I'm not even sure you can see this I have to check the stream after. Right. Sync. Workspaces. I have no idea where to uh, where you can change this. You have a sidebar. Oh, it's for the icons on top, okay. To the right, documents open with a single click. Actually, how can I get this? Uh, how can I say I want to uh, make default? So it's like, I don't know. It doesn't do what I was hoping it would do.
Okay. That's a bit better. Let's see, behaviors, builds. Files, navigation controls. Show him files. Folders above files. Yeah, I like that one more. Makes more sense for me. Use the finder icons. I think that's more clean though. I like that one more. Medium. Just checking my screen whether you could see it. I think this one is, is enough so you could see it. I think you guys can read this right. That it says arch types and stuff. Get source control, blah blah blah. It's all good. Editor. Line numbers, folding bars. Things minimap. Into minimap. Status view. Twelve points. Actually, let me open up something so we can at least uh, see what the hell's going on. Right. Give me a second, chat, because to do this. Decently, I have to actually open up my um, my stream as well, so I can at least see it on a how you guys would normally see it. And I think it's okay, but maybe it needs to be a little bit bigger. Just checking what's happening on the other side. I think that's okay but if it's not let me know and I'll up the stuff editor over scroll I kind of like the fact that you can see like, okay, this is the end. So the other overscroll, default text encoding, all of that, I'm gonna leave as is. Syntax, default syntax, HTML. I don't know, probably. This one says it's markdown, so it's fine. Certain consume matching brackets, wrap selection and type brackets, automatically complete codes and tags. Select prefix when double clicking. The thing is, I don't really have anything PHP open now. Or anything like rainbow. No way. No. But all due respect, uh, for me, it's a bit hard in the eyes. Indentations, tabs for spaces. Single color. I don't want to have flashy stuff. Automatic in the new lines, adjust indentation while typing, and reformat. Yeah, sure. Media. Save JPEG, ask me what to do. Don't feel like I'm gonna change anything. Actually, let's play with this one. So you have neon. <laughs> I have to say, it's pretty cool. Actually, that's nice. You can do the window separately from, from like inside. And I guess you can change all of the stuff with the uh, extensions that, that they have. What's this? I'm already going too fast. I'm like I'm going all over the place. More teams. Interesting. Goose palette, one dark. So 
So these are the extensions, right? Let's work with that one. Key bindings. Hide, show, quit. That's all normal. New window, new project with new folder, blah, 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 new documents, new tab. Um, I, I guess uh, it's just something we have to get used to. So it's a 12 points, so let's up that as well. So that when I use it, people can show. Again, the camera has uh, gone away. So let me just reset it. I don't know why it does a chat. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah, it should be back now. I was accidentally also looking somewhere else at the same time. Beep style. Working directory active process name. That's good. It's fine. Active. New terminals open in the same working directory. Yeah, sure. No servers, no keys. Transfers. I'm not even sure I'm gonna do stuff like this, right? Because I don't know. Doesn't seem like the way to do it. Command line tool can be used to open and create files and workspace from the preferred terminal application. Excuse me. I'm not sure I need this right now. I probably don't. I probably don't. So let's see what's in here. So these are settings for the project. Project name to be different than the container. Cool. You choose different artwork. Default syntax. Automatically index files. Global default. Preview. I wonder because this is like a Hugo, right? I wonder how it knows that this is a Hugo and it needs to build like that. How does it how does it know? That's the thing I, I'm not really sure of. It says PHP is the environment. I'm pretty sure it's not PHP. I mean, remote destinations, findings, hierarchical. That is actually pretty cool. That actually shows me my, my, um, my blog post. I don't even mad, that's cool. Then I don't know what this is. Clips. Git. Changes to the configuration. I don't think this is from me. That's from Nova. Oh, oh, so I'm actually, actually still having Nova. That should be my global git ignore. Then there is the publishing. And other stuff. It's this, new document, local terminal. Show debug thing. Ah, okay. Whoa. What did I just do? What is this? A 
it has an error and it cannot use the error. That's freaky. So this is probably the other run. But you know. See it uses a local host configuration JSON. Ah so because I didn't say what or how, it's probably just taking that. Oh, that's bad luck. Let's see if we can do this um, Hugo thing to make it work with a task. Custom task. Run. Hugo server. D. I think it was like this. That shell script here. That's not how you do it. Because it's a script, right? I don't want a script. I want to. Should be command line. But then I guess I can just do. Do the same with just having a local terminal. I'm going Hugo. Why well, not Hugo? Server D. No. Capital D. So it happens now. The local host uh, is a different one than this. Because it's like a 1313, 13, right? So how can I get Nova to work with uh, with this? Maybe it's because I used the wrong command. Because it's it's capital D, and I think I did. Uh, also, I removed this and it's still here, so it's weird. Um, I think I did it as a build script, right? Cut! So just run. And it's on the Mac. It's a shell script, should be at least. So now it keeps on running. How can I close this actually? Close that. It still goes to the wrong local post. And I bet if I go to 13.13, it just works. How can we make this work? How can we say that it actually needs to go to the correct port?
So if I would do run, it would technically start up everything. And if I then do this, it should. Huh? Give me a sec. I'm gonna figure this stuff out. Might not be the way it was intended to be used, but I'm gonna figure it out. So now it works according to how I want it. That's nice, no? So technically, I could show everything like this. I'm not sure if, if I should expect something here because I'm not seeing anything. So it actually adds the tasks to... and the configuration. The question is, is this something you want to like um, push to your git? Because if, if someone else downloads it and he's not a Nova user, there is nothing he could do with that. On the other hand, it is nice if you are a Nova user. So I'm still not 100% uh, sure how I want to do this. But at least it, I can make it work, right? Also something that's bothering me is you have like a um, create a branch Check out Provision Origin Master. This is something I need to change. But I much more prefer to work in like a... Uh, in like the console, I don't know why. Fetch, pull, push, message. It does know it's me, so that's nice. I can stage stuff. Can you actually open a browser window? No. Because here you have technically a browser window, so you could... It wants access. Why not? So this is actually... Oh, you have it on both sides. Not sure why you would do that actually. I have like a new document that doesn't save it anywhere. Right? So I'm not sure, I'm not completely sold yet on the Nova experience. Something I still have to think about. Oh, okay. Okay, okay. So we're one hour and 40 minutes into this stream, if I'm correct. I'm not sure if I can see it. Yeah, one hour, 40 minutes. So then I think I did most of the setup that I want to do. I have a potential editor. It's 30 days free, so let me try it out. And then we can still see. I could also use the Visual Studio Code. I 
and that would look like this. Chance an update. And the terminal at the bottom, which is nice. I don't know. Let's see what extensions we had. How can I... Um, what else does Nova have? Behaviors? There's no extensions here. Hmm. Let me check where the extensions are. Can customize the touch bar. The touch bar is like way over there. So it's useless for me. Sidebars. Publish reports. Hidden files. Find. Go. Preview. settings extensions that's the one let's see what we have in here so you have clips what are clips versus something else view support for nova editor there's a plugin providing view language support for the new nova editor from panic state of development Generic view text, template script, style view directives, support for Jade and Puck, support for stylus and post CSS, and feature elements. It's got quite the amount of installs. OG tags. It has like no details. Generate lorem ipsum, that's fun. It's very funny. Ruby, Favicon, Handy, keep your fingers on your keyboard. You have commands. Sort by popular, let's do that. A color picker? What does that do? Oh. Not need it. Randomly UUID. I'll let my DB do that. New line. Nova dash rails auto prep. Duplicate. Apologies. I had a really bad night. And so yes, linting is interesting. So what does this do? Redundant double negation. Okay. Thousand eight hundred. Another one here. Is it the same one? Cameron. 
Yeah. This is the same one. Sorry about that there. All right, let's have a look. So we have, so, so for the clips, I think view is interesting. So you have two view and view snippets. You can easily remove it, eh? so just try. As long as it doesn't make it like super heavy, super slow, I'm fine with it. Definitely need to ease linting. Not a pep eight. I'm not really a Python type of guy. Duplicate a line of text with a selection of keystroke. Mm. Find documentation, heart wrap, eye sort, elixir formatter, blink. Completions. By popular. What do we have? TypeScript. So extension provides rich TypeScript integration. That's interesting. You can go to definition, rename, symbol, code, actions. Type info on hover. Sidebar show status info. Let's give it a, a try. What is the env? Syntax and highlight completion for env files. We don't have that yet. I mean, there is no. Uh... Just open something so I can see. Nope. Then actually, that's pretty interesting. Since Symphony and everything works with environment files as well. Here we have the Emmet. I keep forgetting to use Emmet. Like, PHP Storm has Emmet also installed. I think it's even in the default stuff, but I keep forgetting to use it. I just, I keep forgetting it. Can't help it. So oh, if you use it, it's super, super handy. Yeah? Let's install it. If I forget, I forget. It's okay. Yeah, blade. I don't use Laravel blade yet. But I actually also want to learn Laravel. Let's so install it. I didn't even check it. Just did it. Living on the edge. JSON support. It's even hard to read from me. Jesus, what are they doing? Seems okay. That is the only thing I hate about this stuff, right? So you keep adding extensions and before you know it, the editor is so high in extensions that whenever you start it up, it just takes so long. It just takes so long. So a few snippets. View base, view base CSS, view base PCSS, view base DS, and V4, V model. 
So technically it's like an emmet, but for a uh, view. I already know now that I'm going to forget half of these. So I'm going to install it. Trigger, twig. So this one is 210 installs. 194. And this one doesn't have a lot of info. Does the twig one have a lot of info? As a Symphony developer, that is useful. Flow, curvy snippets, and Elixir is not interesting, but WordPress function is. But it has like zero, zero info. Zero. So I thought it would be here. Cancel. Where are my extensions? My so-called extensions. So they're not here, right? That's so weird. You never see your extensions anywhere. Formatters right here. Code formatting with prettier. It's actually here twice with different people. Sauce. Again, ES linting, but they already have it. What's this white space stuff? No. Prettier already start stop running. <laughs> Just funny. It already stopped. Can you actually remove something? Yeah. There we go. I'm not gonna bother with it. If it already fails. Unifies key bindings, languages, config. Sounds interesting. I should have taken popular again. You know. Docker files. Go. I'm not really using Go. Make file. I know. Tasks. They actually have tasks. Task finder. And an RSpec runner. This is actually nice. How did, I, how did I remove this? I don't want to restart it and I don't want to use anything else. I can't remove it. You can't remove it. Restart it, but it's not installed anymore. So. That's a bit weird. Sidebars, chest, don't use chest, let's first look at the validators, popular, prettier stopped working, php lint, could be interesting, html, 
CSS. It's a bit weird that you have to do this all. It's good sniffer, that's good. Code class. Here's the handcrafted one. Curious to see how it looks. That's yeah, so weird. Uh, at least not for me. Style. Neither is this. Perfect dark looks more like perfect blue. Material. Actually, it's funny because this is Visual Studio Code. But then again, it's for multiple stuff. Is my camera gone again? I need to figure out why it does that as well. And what does it actually say? It has something to do something. Let me check it. I don't know, I have to check why it's doing that stuff. I'm not sure it is something that I want to use. Not saying it's bad, but... Oh. Nico. That's pretty solid. Weird thing is you cannot like... Without the glow. <laughs> Espresso? Gravity. Uh, why is there no. If there's no preview, I don't know if I want it. It's pretty difficult then. Nova preferences. Jersey, so I can click it, but I don't see it. Oh, no. definitely not my thing. Definitely not my style. Definitely not. So let's keep it like this. That's cool. So I need to add dot nova to the global git and i keep forgetting where it is i know i have it but i keep forgetting uh I, why would you add underscore global Okay, let's try with uh, with this, right? Do I have a dot get ignore? Yes. How can can you actually open it from the key? Can you like? Nova stuff in here.
you can. You cannot. References. Does it have it in the... Uh, there was something about... Uh, where was it? I think it was in tools? Command line tool? You can probably use it yet. Oh, it's already there. So can I just say like Nova dot batch completion? That's nice. Why did I open the batch completion? Are you kidding me? And I opened the help. I have no idea why. See, every time I tap, it just opens it. That's frustrating. That's better. This music is actually pretty good. Right to. thing is it doesn't refresh right all right because it's like this right chat it's like this right I want to ignore everything that's in dot Nova same as I do for Visual Studio Code For some reason, this one isn't stop run. Ah, oh, all right, great, great, great. They really need to like restart my Nova. Let's just do that. And they're gone. That's good. Does remember what I had. Here we go. And so. Nova is here, but it's ignored. That's good. Because we don't want it. You don't want anything of Nova inside our Git. That's completely up on my end. And so that is something I need to hide on my end. Actually, let's talk about that. I don't know why it says entering secrets because I'm not. This one is. This one isn't. So weird. Can I quickly change that? Intermission. I'm not sure how you guys see that on chat, but uh, at least it changed. So, if you have like, if you have like items in your uh, repository, or let me say it differently, if you have stuff in your directory your working directory of your project or in the directory you know directory of your project and you're actually it's stuff that is typically connected to like in this case my nova so connected to stuff on your desktop that potentially other people won't have or have different setups for then by all means create a global git ignore it will be so much easier for everyone who will try to contribute to your um, project. 
Because say if if I contributed my Nova stuff and someone would have built in this thing to fix like a typo or anything for me, um, then if they would work in Nova as well, everything on their side would be overwritten because my Nova config is inside it. And it's something you don't want. Okay, in this case, the run is the same and I know Hugo typically goes for the port 1330, but that doesn't mean anyone else will. Maybe they set up their Hugo differently. Maybe their default port for Hugo is 1616. So just a tip on the side I want to give you guys, if you have something that is typically based on your environment, put it in the global git conf uh, ignore. Other people will thank you for it. Technically they don't because they don't know, but it's because you were so good to prevent it. All right, and with that, it's uh, I've been streaming for two hours, so I'm going to take a little break, and I'll be right back. All right, I'm back, chat. So, actually, I'm through everything that I wanted to do today. I got the editor, it's set up, I'll see how it goes along the way. And then of course, um, there's still some bugs I need to check out with my camera because of the squares around my face and the fact that it goes into some kind of weird modus every now and then. I'm not sure why. But that is stuff I need to investigate for the next uh, stream. Next full stream, the, the one that is actually planned is next week, Friday. So I'll be here every Friday at 1, starting at 1. Might be a bit earlier, depending on, on how the day is going. Um, but for today, I think I'm going to quit it here. Uh, I will set up some decent stuff for next time. We're probably going to work on my personal site a bit more. Not super happy with it yet. Um, Especially with the fact that every link opens uh, in the same tab, which is annoying if you want to send people to a different place. But for now, I think for today, I'm going to end the stream here. And I wish to thank you all for lurking and watching. And if you have any suggestions, feel free to enter it in the box below. See you all next time.